Hello. Hello, is that Graham? Speaking. Hello, Graham. It's, uh, it's John Pemberley here. We had a call scheduled for about now. Is this still a good time? Hi, John. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks for calling. Yeah, of course. Yeah, fantastic. I've been looking forward to it. You're, you're, you're based in London, right? Yes. Awesome. How, how's the weather over there at the moment? A bit cold? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's always a little bit inconsistent, isn't it? But uh, yeah, pretty cold this morning. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's similar, similar over here. I'm probably just down the road from you. Um, so listen, look, I really appreciate your interest in, in booking this call. And obviously the purpose of this call is, is to dive in to, to what you've got going on in your business, yep. see if uh, I can help you solve some of the problems that you've got, uh, you know, find out where the, where the blockages are. And, and if I can help, of course, I'll let you know what that looks like. We've got various coaching programs that, that may be an option. And, and of course, if I can't help, um, as a conclusion of the call, then I'll do my best to point you in the direction of something else that will, will help. Does that sound good? Brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. So what you're going to be witnessing today is a sales script and a framework for a sales call that you can use as an expert, as a coach with zero sales experience to take a prospect from interested to actually becoming a client. Now, we're not going to be getting into advanced sales tactics on this particular training, but what you're going to hear is a flow and a framework that you can be using to get much better at sales than you probably are right now. What I've just done to introduce the call is I've done what we would call frame the call. I don't want much small talk with the prospect. I'm not here to make a friend. I'm here to make it very clear that I'm their trusted advisor and I'm leading this conversation, which is what I've just demonstrated. And now we're going to get into the next part of the framework, which I call the detective. I want to find out what Graham's got going on, what he needs help with, and see if genuinely what I've got is of help to him. Awesome. So Graham, listen, I've got, I've got a notepad in front of me. I'm going to take some notes as we go. And uh, I think a great place to start might just be, you know, why you booked the call with me today. Yeah. Okay. So things are going okay. Um, but I, you know, what I'm craving really is just that consistency. Um, with with the leads that are coming through really you know obviously I want to make more money as I'm sure everybody else does um, so that's really why why I bought the call okay so you, you mentioned leads so that's the biggest issue at the moment not traffic not conversions just more leads uh, I guess qualified leads is is my issue you know I've got you know I can I can generate the leads but when I sort of get the, the prospect on the phone um, what I'm finding a lot of the time is that they're either not in a position to move forward or they're not a good fit for, for what it is that I do. I'm just not sure why. Okay, got it. So having conversations much like the one we're having right now, but typically just leading to a, a no as opposed to a yes. Exactly. Yeah, got it. Okay, so and presumably you were invited to book a call with me today from watching my webinar, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. What, what did you think of that? I thought it was great. You know, I took I took great value from it. You know, and obviously I've 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 booked the call, so it's um, you know, it's it's done the job, right? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Great. So, the fact that you're getting calls booked already leads me to believe that you have some kind of process in place, at least, that's getting calls booked. So I want to circle back on that in a minute. I've made yeah. a note to come back, but but first, let's start at the top. Um, would you mind just let me know what your offer is, what it is that you've got going on? That'd be a very helpful yeah. place to start. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's a twelve-week program. Okay. Um, and what I do is teach uh, men, um, focus on men and uh, building their their confidence levels if they've you know potentially had a, a knock in their confidence or something happen in their lives, um, and they just want to get back to you know their their former self or a better version of of their selves now. So that's what I do. I've got some great results. I've got some great testimonials from that. Um, I just need more more people to help. Got it. Very cool, man. What a great business. How, how did you, how did you get into that? Um, I've just been, been down that, that road myself, you know, I sort of, uh, self taught, um, you know, it took me a few, few years to, you know, to get my confidence back and, uh, be the best version of myself. And I just feel that it's my calling and, and my passion to, to help others really. Um, I just want to make a difference. Amazing. So, um, I might be getting ahead of myself here a little bit, um, but when we are putting together marketing, messaging and positioning to try and get the right clients, you know, using a webinar, using YouTube ads, as I'm sure you're aware from going through my training, the more yep. specific we can get, the better the result. So could you let me know the men that typically come to you with confidence issues, 
Um, mm -hmm. Why have those issues come about? Like, what, what's the what's the common denominator? You know, with how they've had their confidence knocked. Is it a relationship? Is it something in the workplace? Is it trying to build a business and then getting knocked back? I mean, what, what, what's what's a typical avatar for you? Yeah, so it could be all of those those things you've just mentioned. Quite often, it is some form of trauma. So whether that's a divorce, a breakdown in in a relationship, um, some kind of loss, um, that's that's often for me. Um, you know, the client that I will end up working with and having great success with. But it could be professional as well. You know, and, and what my training does is is helps people in the professional and personal relationships. Got it. So one thing I've just done there in this beginning part of the conversation is I want to ask questions to really uncover what's truly going on. And what I've done there by using very specific wording of, hey, I'm skipping ahead here a little bit, but, and then I've endeavored to provide a little bit of value. But because I've said skipping ahead, that doesn't invite Graham to continue going down that path of just trying to extract as much value from me. I'm going to come back to my line of questioning, but by dropping in a bit of value at the beginning of the call, the person starts to really feel understood valued um, and of course it's building that no like and trust so i always try to drop that in there somewhere in the line of questioning a bit of value uh, if i can now i'm going to get back to my questions awesome so um price point graham i mean are you firstly pretty clear on how much you're charging or is that still a little bit of a gray area um so it's taken me a while to get to this point so i started off selling uh, for, for peanuts, to be honest, I'm now at a price point of, of 2,500, so that's US dollars. Um, and I'm pretty sort of settled at that price point. I probably still feel like I'm too cheap for the value that I'm giving. Um, but that's where I'm at at the moment, 2,500. Okay, got it. 2,500, but still feeling perhaps a bit cheap. So then um, what, what's stopping you putting the price up? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, uh, ironically, probably the confidence to, you know, to sell at a higher ticket. Hmm, okay. And that, and that lack of confidence, I mean, I'm putting words in your mouth, but perhaps because you don't have enough clients right now. Yeah. I, I you know, I completely agree with that. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I just, just real quick, I'm getting, I'm getting on, on a side story here, but I remember being in a meeting once with some friends of mine when I was really, really new to business and I was only selling thousand dollar courses. And I remember we were sat around this fire pit and I was, I was catching up with some friends and we just had this moment of inspiration. And a friend said, hey, look, you know, we should, we should think about adding on something to our thousand dollar course and have like a high ticket retreat and charge $10,000. And, um, and I remember inside my stomach was turning and I thought the thought of charging $10,000, I genuinely did not believe that was possible. I could not yeah. compute that amount. But outwardly, I was trying to pretend that I was keeping my cool together. Um, but inwardly, I was thinking, how am I going to escape this scenario and, and not feel embarrassed? But I just I don't want to be involved in a 10K offer. I just didn't believe it. But then, of course, yeah. now, you know, I'm charging 10, 20, in some cases, $30,000 for my coaching. And, and we're doing that pretty routinely. So it, it really is like the idea of increasing your price. It is truly one of those things where you, you just don't know what you don't know. Right. And, and once yeah. you start to get some momentum, you start to realize that the price, the price can go up. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to, to, to do that. You know, it's, it, it, I've gone from, you know, literally, you know, 500 to, to where I am now. So hopefully I can continue sort of raising that price. It's just that when I'm speaking to people on the phone and I'm getting those no's, um, it just, you know, it, it knocks me back, you know, in order, in order to, to raise those prices. Yeah, absolutely. No, I totally get that. So I just did something really important there at that part in the call. Now, typically on these sales calls, you wouldn't do much talking. You would let the prospects do talking. And any time that you have decided to pipe up and, and tell a story, it's got to be snappy, but it's got to be meaningful and it's got to lead that prospect closer to a sale. Now that part wasn't planned, but I saw an opportunity to do a price anchor for my coaching. So when I, when I heard that he was nervous to increase his price, I figured it would be perfect to drop in a, a quick story, paint the picture around a fire pit, really make Graham feel a part of the story and, uh, and share a scenario where I was able to boost my confidence to charge more. And it's going to do two things. Number one, it's going to help Graham's confidence because he's going to realize that John's been there with me. He understands that feeling. Um, but secondly, I've price anchored my coaching to a minimum of $10,000. I've mentioned 10, 20, 30,000 and being very confident now to do so. So in the back of Graham's mind, 
he's going to start to think now, if an offer comes from John, it's probably going to be minimum 10,000. So he's starting to already think about that, which is very helpful for the, the offer that may or may not come a little bit later on. So, um, no, this, this is great. And I, I'm taking notes um, as we go. Um, just, real, just real quick, I mean, is this, is, is, are you the sole person in the business here? You, 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 or are you building this with someone else? Yeah, I'm a one-man band as it stands. You know, I'd love to build out teams in the future, but you know, with with current revenue, it's just not not feasible. You know, at this stage, I I do want to eventually take a step back, but um, you know, it's just me, myself, and I at the moment. Yeah, got it. No, perfect. You know, and I, and I find people in those scenarios sometimes there's some kind of engagement from from a spouse or a partner. There's some help there, but but other times it's that they're completely distant and they just leave you to it. What what's your scenario? Um, well, my wife, bless her, she, she's really supportive. You know, she's, uh, she, she's my biggest fan. So, um, yeah, she's been, she's been great. She sort of keeps her distance, which is, you know, for me, I think quite healthy when you're, you're trying to run a business. Great. Got it. So, so does that mean with, with you making decisions, you can just go full force, you know, you're not having to run decisions past her for running ads or investing in coaching or anything like that. She, she's happy with you just making your own decisions and, and diving ahead. Definitely. I think that's key to a healthy relationship, right? She's got her thing. I've got mine, um, you know, and we just yeah make our own decisions. Great. Cool. That's awesome. Um, that, that helps the, the speed of you making good decisions and moving forward. You know, I'm a big believer in, you know, wasted time is, is wasted opportunity. So that's, that's great. I love hearing that. Um, okay. So offer I'm all clear on actually, oftentimes I need to dive into um, a bit more questioning on someone's avatar or offer or price because I just don't understand it and I want to make sure I truly understand it before we move on but the reality is this is really clear to me we've got clients just like you um, you know selling similar things so I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with that so far so what I've just done is I've given Graham a vote of confidence I've mentioned that some clients it takes a while to really understand but with him, I get it. We've got clients just like him. So he's going to really be building that confidence up that we could perhaps be helping him because we, we get his situation. So where I'd like to go next, Graham, then is, you know, you mentioned that you are getting some calls booked, which I first want to commend you on that. That's that's awesome. I mean, a lot of people in our space get really stuck at the launching phase and you've clearly found something that's worked. Perhaps you could talk me through that in to be honest, a little bit of detail. I mean, what, what is the sales funnel that you're using or, or the process to get calls at the moment? Well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's inconsistent, John, you know, it's, um, you know, I could, I could take, uh, five calls one week and, and, you know, one call potentially the next. So it's that kind of feast and famine, you know, as the calls come in, um, and, you know, I've done, uh, Facebook ads, um, and they've just gone really directly to, uh, the website where they can choose to book a call or, or not book a call. So that's been really the only process, if you like, um, you know, we get in those calls booked. Got it. Okay. So I've got some bad news for you then. Can I share that with you? Yeah. We, we never ever want to send paid ad traffic to a website. We, it, it always wants to go through some kind of sales, sales funnel, a bit like the webinar, right? I mean, that's, that's ideal scenario. Um, but we've certainly got to go through a series of pages that lead someone to a result as opposed to just a static website because there's just too many, too many distractions, right? I mean, have you, have you yeah. looked much into sales funnels? Have you tried any? Um, I haven't really, you know, I'm, I haven't tried anything in depth like that, you know, a real funnel, if you like, um, you know, I've tried sort of reaching out to people, um, but I, you know, the, the, the process I've been using is, is paid Facebook ads straight to the website. It's pretty clear to them that they can book a call on there. And I think the website's pretty good, but that's, that's the only process that, that I have been using. So I know I've got a lot to learn. Got it. Okay. And so from the Facebook ad to the website, to the opportunity to book a call, what level of, I mean, we would call it indoctrination, right? Where they get to go through a piece of content or really get to know you before they book a call. What, what, what are they seeing on the website before the invitation to book a call? There's some testimonials on there. Um, you know, I've got, I've got pricing on there so they can get a good idea of, of, of the investment. Um, but other than that, really, the level of indoctrination, I guess, is just seeing me on, on, on that quick Facebook ad. Um, and hopefully I'll resonate with them on there enough to get them to book that call. Got it. Okay. That's actually super helpful. So I've got 
quite a few thoughts on that for you, but uh, I'm going to save that for later. I'll, I'll share that with you in, in just a little bit. Um, okay. okay, got it. So, so just so I'm clear then, dabbled a little bit with sales funnels, nothing really has materialized, and the main vehicle at the moment is Facebook ad directly to website. Yes. Got it. Um, the Facebook ads themselves, I mean, this is all very subjective, but have they been successful in, in the sense of you have gotten clicks at a decent price? Um, I'm probably not the best at sort of gauging, you know, what, what the clicks are costing me, if you like, or if the, the leads are costing me. But, you know, I'm, I'm averaging around 5K per month at the moment. So, you know, whether that's successful or not, that, you know, I'm, I'm getting a handful of calls booked uh, every week, if that, and, you know, somehow I managed to scrape over the line at, at 5K per month. So it's, you know, it's, it's keeping me afloat, but nothing more than that. Got it. Okay. So we're getting a couple, a couple of clients a month at the moment at the 2,500 and you're getting, yep. you said five calls sometimes a week, but then sometimes it's a little bit lower. So if it was the five calls, we're looking at five, 10, 15, maybe so 15 to 20 calls a month. Yeah. Yeah. As a maximum, I think. As a maximum. Got it. And so then what would be, um, so on a month where you have 5k in revenue, how many calls would you have to generate that 5k? Um, uh, that would probably be a better month in terms of leads coming in. So yeah, I, you know, I pro I'll probably get the, you know, the, between the 15 and 20 calls. You know, if we said 20 for, for easy maths, I, I think that'd probably be fair. Interesting. Got it. Okay. Got quite a few things on that as well. I'll, I'll come back to that. Okay, great. Um, awesome. Um, so what, what is the, what's the target monthly revenue then? You know, if you're at 5K at the moment and that's dissatisfactory, where, where would you ideally like to be? Um, I've got 20K in my mind. Yep. 20K, revenue or profit? Well, I mean, I'd love that to be profit, right? But if, if I can get to 20K in, in revenue even, you know, at this, at this stage, I'd be, I'd be a very happy man. Got it. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to ask you the same question again, but what's the real number? So 20k a month is the number that's in your head right now. If all yeah. shackles were released and a marketing system was in place that was absolutely smashing it for you, what's, what's, the, what's the real dream number? Um, I, I really feel that I have something that's scalable, you know. Um, so, you know, if I could get to 50k a month and that, and that was profit, then well, you know, that would be, well, I mean, I think that'd be life changing for anybody, but it, it would certainly be life changing for me. Very cool. Love it. 50 K great goal. Fantastic. Um, have you, have you tried anything else to, to get this solved other than just trying to figure this out by yourself? Have you done any other coaching? Have you invested in training? Um, I've tried to do some self taught stuff. You know, I've been on, on, you know, on YouTube, Facebook, Google, just, you know, trying to sort of scrape by on my own. That's probably why I'm living in the dark ages a little bit with my Facebook ads direct to the website, right? Um, so, you know, I haven't gone into any programs or, or or invested heavily, you know, into sales funnels. So, you know, the answer probably to that is no. I've tried some self-taught stuff, but, you know, nothing nothing serious. Got it. Okay. And what, if you don't mind me asking, what, what's what stopped you getting help? Uh, up until now, I mean, presumably you're booking this call because you've got to a point where you realise that you need further help. I'm just wondering um, why it's taken so long. Do you know what, John? I, I just thought I could crack it myself, you know, uh, at some point, but it's gotten to that stage now. It's been, you know, a few years at, at the current, you know, 5K per month. And, you know, it's just not enough really to you know, you can cover your, your outgoings on that and, that and that's it. So that's, that's not what I'm in this space for, you know, so I, you know, I know I need some help. Got it. So what I'm starting to do now is, as you can tell, my questions are moving away from practicalities, offer, price point, funnels. And I was starting to dig into exposing a bit of the pain behind this situation, because if we just keep this very surface level and I'm just asking Graham questions that are very practical, then there's very little emotion in the conversation. And for most people, 
it's the emotional triggers that's going to lead them to a buying decision, not so much the practical. So I'm going to actually ask him a couple more questions now that continue to go down that path. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be a bully, but I'm just, I just want to poke the reasons why Graham wants to do this to bring that to the forefront of his mind so that he realizes that right now it's a priority to move forward. Awesome. Um, Graham, do you mind if I, you know, ask you a potentially, um, you know, slightly personal question? No, go ahead. Because obviously, well, I appreciate that firstly, uh, you know, this is obviously a, a marketing slash businessy call, but I mean, why, why, why are you doing this? You know, what, what's, what's the reason behind the 20 K and 50 K a month? And, um, yeah, let's bring, bring, bring me behind the scenes a little bit. Well, for, firstly, I want to help more, more guys, right? You know, there's a, there's a problem out there, you know, that people are crippled with, with their confidence issues, but you know, I, I also want to make some money from doing this, right? I feel like I have a skill set that can really have an impact, but you know, I haven't had a holiday with my wife in, in three years, you know? Um, and even then it was a, a budget, you know, holiday to, you know, I can't remember where, but you know, we're not, we're not thriving. We're, we're surviving at this stage and that that's my motivation. Got it. No, that's helpful. I, pr I appreciate you being so honest. So why not just stop? Why not just give up? Why, why does this need to be something that you get cracked now? Well, I, I don't want to work for, for somebody else again, you know, um, again, you know, I want to have an impact. I want to leave a legacy. Um, and I've, I genuinely feel that this is the, the way for me and this is my path and I can make, you know, 20, even 50 K per month from doing it. Um, you know, I just don't know how at this stage. Mm. Uh, great. Got it. So just a quick side note, I'm making notes here on little things that Graham's mentioning that I feel would help me and give me leverage in the later part of the call. I'm, I'm writing things down like legacy. You know, I want to point back to that. I'm writing down that he hasn't had a holiday in three years. I'm writing down that it's time to get serious, you know, right now. So I'm writing all these things down because they're going to help me uh, at the end of the call when inevitably, if I make an offer, he's going to feel a bit nervous. Very few people just jump straight at an offer. So I'm actually pretty much done with my line of questioning for Graham now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move through to the next part of the framework, which is actually called wrap it up. This is where I'm going to conclude our conversation so far and make sure that Graham feels understood, but that I've actually understood the situation accurately. I need an accurate view of the situation to determine if I can help him. And, uh, and Graham needs to feel understood if he's to move forward on a coaching opportunity. So now we're going to go to um, the wrap it up. All right, Graham, listen, you know, firstly, thank you so much for, for your time and actually, you know, answering those questions. I don't want to feel like I'm interrogating you, but it is really helpful yeah. for me to get, you know, a good idea of, of what you got going on. Um, do you mind if I just paint a little bit of a summary real quick of what I've understood so far? Not at all. Okay. So my, my understanding of the situation is you've got a great offer. It's something that's based on your life experience. So it's not something that you've just plucked out of thin air. This is something you're truly passionate about. You know, it's, yeah. you, you want to help these men boost their confidence, get their mojo back, get back on their A game. And of course, everything that that opens up for them in the world again, you've got a great offer by the sounds of it, $2,500. I've intentionally yep. not asked you much about how you deliver that offer and what's included in it, because um, quite frankly, at this point in time, I don't need to know too much about that. My prerogative is understanding the price point um, and, and helping you get a bit of scale. And then we can fine tune that later on down the line. But $2,500 offer, at the moment, um, we don't really have uh, a sales funnel in place at the moment. We're relying on a website that really isn't producing much um, uh, results at the moment. We've got some Facebook ads on, but you don't really have a handle on the numbers, so we're not sure if they're actually working or not. You're getting a bunch of calls booked, which is great. That's the good news, but most of them are turning into no's. And on a good month, you know, we're getting one to two clients um, at, at best. Is that is that a pretty good summary of, of your situation? Yep. Yep. Spot on. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, well, listen, look, I've got, I've got some, I've got some bad news and some good news. Can I start with the bad news? Yeah, please. <laughs> okay. Get it out of the way. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way because the bad news is we do need to help you here. We need to get this solved. Um, you, you can't continue like this. You can't continue with Facebook ads that you don't really know if they're performing or not. 
We can't continue with a website without a sales funnel that's not indoctrinating people. And we certainly can't continue with you having 15 to 20 calls that's taking most likely an hour at least each and is just wasting a lot of your precious time that you can't get back. So bad news is yeah. we've got to, like, this is wrong. It's not working and we've got to fix it. Um, mm -hmm. Would you like the good news? Please. Well, the good news is I, I actually do think that I can help you. Um, and, you know, we can talk about, you know, potentially working together a little bit later on. But first, I'd love to just give you a bit of a roadmap as to, you know, what I think you should do from this point forward. Um, if you have got a, a notepad and a pen, perhaps, and you want to take some notes. Yep. Yep. Fire away. So now that I've wrapped it up and Graham's in agreement that I've understood it correctly and I'm feeling good about him as a prospect, I'm going to move forward and I'm going to uh, go down the path of actually you know, endeavoring to enroll him as a client. The wrap it up part is the moment where I would genuinely decide if I can help him or I can't. And if I think I can't, that's when I get off the phone. And this is the big part of sales that I think people get wrong is you just try to enroll anyone with a pulse and a credit card and, and we shouldn't be doing that. We wanna make sure that they're actually a, a, good, a good prospect for you. Graham in this instance sounds good and it sounds quite promising. So I'm gonna continue down the path of trying to enroll him. So now moving into the next phase, which has the same name as I just described to Graham. This is the roadmap. Now it's very important to note, I'm not presenting my offer here, okay? I'm not getting into the deliverables of the coaching and what's included and how it works. That's not what I'm getting into. Right now I'm getting into the roadmap, the journey, the blueprint. To Graham, it's gonna feel like a breath of fresh air. It's gonna feel exciting, like he's getting a bit of a plan. But the reality is that plan just points to doing coaching with me to help execute it. So it's gonna be um, on the theme of what I call the wow, not the how. I wanna give him wow moments and get him excited about the roadmap, but he doesn't know how to do it unless he works with me. So it's a fine, fine line here, and I think you'll learn something from seeing how I uh, describe this. So awesome. So, so you, you ready to take some notes? Yep. Good stuff. All right. So first thing I'd like you to write on your notepad, if you could just put a number one as the first step. Yep. And if you just put offer next to number one mm -hmm. and then make a note next to that that says moving forward, we should be looking to increase your price. But for now, we can stay at 2500 Okay because I want you to come back to these notes later on and remember this conversation that you're currently not charging enough. However, I'm a big believer in making sure you're charging at least $2,000 because less than that, it's just not worth your time taking these calls. You're at 2,500, which is, which is great. And I like being a bit cheaper in the beginning because if you are undercharging what you know you yep. are worth, it creates this confidence with you on the phone. Imagine if I said to you now, Graham, imagine if I said my advice is, Graham, you are not charging enough. You should be charging $10,000 and you should make that decision tomorrow. You are now gonna perhaps go onto your enrollment calls and try to follow my advice, but not feel confident in it. And that's probably gonna lead to no enrollments as well. Yeah. Whereas off the back of our conversation so far, 2,500 is something that you feel good about but you also realize that you should be charging more. So if I can keep you there for a little bit longer, you'll be confident on the phone. I can help yep. you get your close rate up to, you know, the 40, 50, 60% that it really should be. And then at mm -hmm. that point, we can look to in increase your price. Does that make sense? That'd be great, yep. Awesome. So listen, I've done a couple things here that's really important. Number one, when you've got a prospect that has some things that you could change about what they've got going on, you have to decide to pick your battles. Some things Graham needs to change. One of them was, is a website needs to become a sales funnel. So I've already got that and I've also got some traffic stuff I need to talk to him about. So what I don't wanna do is introduce too many changes because if I introduce too many changes, it's gonna overwhelm him and that overwhelm could lead to him not enrolling in the program. So the offer, I'm genuinely happy to keep it there for a bit with the view to increase it. So I've given him the freedom to do that. It's one less thing for him to have to think about. Second thing I'm doing, and you're probably noticing, I'm dropping it into conversation. I'm seeding the idea of working with me. I'm saying things like, we can work together later to increase your price. We can work on that first. Let's work together on getting your close rate up to 50%. Things like that. I'm not being so overt as talking about making a coaching offer yet, but I am dropping these seeds um, to, you know, alluding to that. And, and that's going to be 
planting that seed with him quite successfully and he'll be the, the desire will be increased to, to, to want to do that. Awesome. So, um, Graeme, the second thing that I want you to write down, so put number two on your notes. Yep. Second thing is we're, gonna, we're not going to do this in the order that you might think we are. The second thing is actually the funnel, okay? We have got to build you a sales funnel that replaces your website and does the heavy lifting for you so that we get people on the phone that are um, far closer down the buying journey um, than than someone who's just watched a five minute video or just landed on your website, seen a couple of testimonials and decided to book a call. We need to get yeah. someone much further down the timeline. If you imagine, and you could even draw this out on your notepad if you wanted to, if you imagine a timeline all the way from zero to 10, okay? And a zero is someone who has never heard of you before. And a 10 is someone who is completely sold, credit card in hand, they want to shout their digits down the phone to you. Yep. We need to get people further up that conversion timeline before they ever even get on the phone with you. We ideally want to be speaking to sixes, sevens, eights. Sometimes we get on the phones with nines and tens. And, and I'll tell you, they're amazing conversations. <laughs> people just jump on the phone. They say, John, I want your coaching. How much is it? Can I just sign up? And you have to almost knock them back a peg or two to make sure that they're actually a good fit first. But yeah. typically six, seven, eight. Whereas at the yeah. moment, and if you want to put a little marker on your notes there, round about like a number one or a two, if you put a marker there and then just identify that that's where you're at right now. Yeah. If someone's coming from yeah. a Facebook ad, landing on your website and booking a call immediately, nothing has happened yet to get them up that timeline. So you're speaking to people at a one or a two. Makes and sense. so this right here is one of the reasons why you're not converting well enough on the phone. Because you, you mentioned, you know, a good week is two clients off the back of 20 calls. So that, that well, that means you're converting at 10%. Even I can do that math and I failed at school. Yeah. All right. So you're, you're, so you're converting at 10%. That's not nearly where we should be. We should be up at 30%, 40%, 50% and continuing to climb from there. So if we could just get you on the phone with more qualified people, instantly you could triple or quadruple the current revenue you're generating from the same number of calls. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. So the way that we do this, if you want to write this down, we use a webinar funnel. I mean, the, 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 the proof is in the pudding, right? Like we're on the phone right now and you've ended up here after watching a webinar. Yep. And off the back of our conversation, you've already pointed out that you've been deciding even before you got on the phone that it's time to make a change and that it's time to get some proper help and you haven't inquired about that before you've been going it alone and you've just come to the realization that you really do need some help now and you've watched my webinar and you've resonated with the information and now here we are having a chat yep so what i've just done there is again i'm planting the seed i'm almost creating uh, Graham's new identity, right? His existing identity is that he's just trying to figure this out himself. His new one is, well, I've, I've got to get help now. I, I've re this is what I've got to step into. So I'm re-anchoring that because it's now going to feel difficult, potentially awkward for Graham to backtrack. If he doesn't oppose what I'm saying, then he's, he's by extension, he's agreeing with the statement that it's time to get help and get coaching. And so if he doesn't, if he doesn't deny that, then later on in the call, it would be far more difficult and awkward for him to say, actually, I don't want coaching because we've already established that he does. So I'm going to keep anchoring that as we go. So, so yes, yeah, so the way we do that, Graham, is with, a, is, is with a webinar funnel. A webinar funnel, as you've already experienced, does all the telling and selling for you. And I tell you what I love most. I mean, look, I mean, how many hours have you got? There's so many things I could tell you about why webinars are amazing, but I'll, I'll focus on the main one. Yep. Somebody can only book a call with you at the very end of the webinar. So what that does is the wrong people, the people that you would have got on the phone with only to determine after 30 minutes that they're a complete waste of time and they're not a good yeah. fit for you. The webinar's doing that for you. They're leaving the presentation if they're not resonating with what you're saying. And the only people left at the end of a webinar are the people that have obviously loved the content so much so that they're still sticking around and they're the only people that get the invitation. Do you, do you see how that would give you qualified calls out the back end? Yeah, it makes complete sense. They, they, they need to go on a bit of a journey before they even get to speak to me, don't they? 
That's exactly right. So you've got a choice of either taking someone from a two to a six, eight, or, 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 or sorry, a six, seven, or eight um, on the phone, or you could replace yourself with an automated webinar that's going to do that for you and get then get people up to that six, seven, or eight before you get on the phone. And conversions yep. naturally follow. Yep. Yeah. Understanding it so far, should I move on? Yeah, it's brilliant. Make, makes a lot of sense. Okay, great. So the next thing, where did we get up to? Really, that was two, right? Now we're on to three? Yep. So what I did there might have seemed like it was um, made a mistake, but actually that was by design. I want Graham to get the, this sense in moments that I'm a real person. I'm not a genius. I'm not super smart. I forget what number we are on a list. I dropped into conversation earlier that, you know, even I can do that math and I failed all my GCSEs. Like I'm dropping these things in because I want him to pick up on There's nothing special about John. I'm not having to say it. He's coming to his own realization about it. So the third one is traffic. Okay. So if you put traffic there and you're already yep. using Facebook ads, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, Facebook is, you know, it's still a decent platform. But what we find is a very easy quick switch is switching from Facebook ads to YouTube ads. YouTube ads are so powerful. Do you, you, you remember I spoke about that on the webinar, right? Yes. Yeah. And so d d did that open your eyes up a little bit to how powerful YouTube ads are? It definitely did. Yeah. I hadn't even thought about YouTube, to be honest. Um, I, you know, I was just set on Facebook, but, you know, I, I can see, I think I can see now, um, you know, the differences there. Got it. Well, actually, just just very quickly then to interject with this from the content I delivered on the webinar, what was the thing that most stood out to you about why YouTube ads would be so powerful? I think what I feel is that people that are on YouTube are genuinely looking to level up in some kind of way, you know, um, as opposed to mindlessly scrolling through Facebook. Um, you know, they're there on YouTube essentially to learn something and improve. So it's that mindset and um, you know, they're, they, 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 they're into video content as well, aren't they? So I, I feel like there is a few, uh, a few major differences between the platforms. That's right. No, no, you're, you're spot on. And that, that's, I'm so pleased to hear that that all landed with you and, and made sense. So, so YouTube traffic really is the vehicle that we want. Um, because it's, it's yeah. not only, I think a more powerful platform than, than Facebook ads gets you more targeted people, but, but furthermore, a marketing campaign, and I don't hear many people talking about this, a marketing campaign needs to be, um, it needs to flow uh, a bit like a relay race, right? Where there's a number of people on the team and they're in the race together and they're passing the, the, the baton to the next person. And the same thing needs to happen in a marketing campaign. You know, the traffic and the funnel and the sales process need to work together. They need to be in unison. And so we can't just bolt together any old traffic source with any old funnel, with any old phone script, right? We need to yep. have a process all the way through. And, um, and I just find that YouTube and webinars work so well together. They're a match made in heaven because if somebody's watching video content, um, then being invited to a webinar presentation that is, of course, just an extended video, they're, yep. they're far more likely to be willing and able to watch a webinar. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Definitely. And then this is not part of the model, but a tip for you. And this is going to be quite important, particularly if we end up working together, Graham, this is something yep. that I'm going to be sticking with you quite closely on is understanding the numbers. You know, you mentioned earlier and I made a note of it because it was so prominent to me that you didn't really know if your Facebook ads were working or not. And you just yep. weren't really sure of the numbers for you to scale a business and scale it successfully. We actually have a have a really clear handle on the numbers. What's working? Mm -hmm. What's not? How much am I spending? What's the return? What's it costing me to get a lead? What's it costing me to get a click and a sale? They don't need to be overwhelming. In fact, that we inside of our a coaching program, we have checklists for this. We literally break down exactly what numbers you should be looking for so that you never get off track. But it's really, really important that you're following those numbers and making what I would call data driven decisions. Does that make sense? Definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm guilty as charged, you know, in terms of not having a handle on, on what a lead is costing me at this stage. Got it. Very cool. Well, no, that's, that, that's good. Now, what I've just done there is um, you know I'm I'm wanting I'm wanting to seed my coaching again. I'm pointing out um, you know that inside of my coaching we have these checklists, and so I'm building the desire for the offer before it's before it's even here. 
and that's going to that's going to of course uh, greatly help and so then there's just one final thing here graham and that's and that's the fourth thing which is the sales these conversations like the one we're having right now i mean i don't know about you i'm quite enjoying this conversation i i, I wonder if you're enjoying it too <laughs> definitely am yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it this hasn't come across as pushy or salesy has it no i mean i think even from this call um you know whether we're working together or not I've, you know just understanding the numbers you know and, and taking the customer on that journey and what i've learned from this call alone has, has been brilliant so i appreciate it great no no you're very welcome and so you know and, th and that's by design right like you know you went on that journey and you booked a call already kind of thinking yeah no, i'm quite i'm interested in exploring whether there's whether there's a solution here and and that's the same outcome that i want for you and that there's we achieve that really in two parts the first part is making sure that we get qualified leads on the phone, but the YouTube ads and the webinar is going to handle that. But the second part is making sure that you can deliver the phone calls correctly so that you can truly understand the prospect, just as I've done for you here today, genuinely yep. qualify people. Believe it or not, we say no to a lot more people that want to work with us than we actually offer a space to in our coaching. And that's because yep. we, we, well, firstly, actually care about our prospects, but secondly, I endeavor to qualify them properly on the phone. So you've got to have a process, you've got to have a script. And of course, you know, if we ended up working together, we have that script, we have it all. Um, but you, you, that's the fourth thing. You know, it's qualified people on the phone and then making sure that you're following a process that leads that prospect, if appropriate, all the way to a close. You with me so far? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. So of everything I've just shared so far, what stands out to you the most? What's the most exciting thing? I think everything really. I think I have have been uh, not great on those sales calls. Um, you know, I get the standard objections, and um, you know, I probably don't push back as as much as I should um, for the benefit of my prospects. But just you know, having the right traffic source, taking them on that journey through that webinar, um, you know, it makes complete sense to have that structure. And I think that structure is is really what I've been missing. Very cool. Love it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to get Graham's confirmation that he's all in 10 out of 10 on the process, right? If we don't get a 10 out of 10, we don't proceed to um, we don't proceed to actually making an offer, okay? So you'll probably hear this in just a moment. I'm sure Graham for whatever reason won't be a 10 out of 10. And you'll hear how I'll handle that because I must get him to a 10 out of 10 before we progress forward to an offer because I guarantee you if someone's not a 10 out of 10 on the process, they're not going to be uh, a 10 out of 10 on signing up for your coaching. So we wait here until we get that confirmation. And it usually just needs a bit of clarity for the prospect as to what exactly we actually meant. So great, great stuff, Graham. Um, look, I'd, I'd love to know where you are. Let's say, I don't know, scale, scale of one to 10. Where are you on the scale of one being this sounds awful, I don't like the process and I hate it, and 10 out of 10 is I'm all in on this, I get it and I want it? Uh, okay, um, uh, probably a nine. Okay, nine's pretty good. Nine out of 10, I like that. What's, what's keeping you from being a 10? Um, I, I guess... Well, I, well, I, I, you know, I don't know how to do it. I, I guess I've never done it before. So it's just having that, you know, that confidence really, um, you know, but in terms of the process itself, you know, it feels clear. Um, I, guess, I guess, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever a 10, right? Well, let, let me, let me rephrase the question then, because, you know, there are a lot of people that are 10 out of 10. So I just wonder if I made a mistake in how I phrased the question. So not, not 10 out of 10 in terms of, perhaps you believe that you can absolutely use this and get to 50k like your confidence level 10 out of 10 i'm talking about the process what i've described from from the first point of your offer all the way to closing the sales um how exciting does that sound to you 10 out of 10 uh, from a scale of one to 10 that that's what i meant i think in terms of the process itself i, I am a 10 you know and i think probably the you know the nine is coming from from me as opposed to you know, the process itself. I, I would say I'm a 10 with the actual process. Great. Okay. Awesome. Good stuff. Well, look, Graham, um, I'm going to lay my cards on the table. I, I, I do think I can help you. And, and more so, I'd actually be quite excited to help you. You know, I have quite a number of these conversations that 
if I can be so honest, you know, they, they, they turn into nothing because I have to turn people away. I, to be honest, I had a phone call just yesterday and um, I was talking with this chap and it only took 30 minutes to realize that his business, I just had no idea what it was. I, I couldn't wrap my head around it, couldn't understand it. And, yep. um, and I, I think it was something to do with providing oil to wind farms or something. I just thought, what on earth is going on here? And, um, and yep. so, so I, I ended up ending the call and, and I, didn't, I didn't move forward with him and he was quite surprised. And, but yep. that, that does happen. You know, if, if I'm going to offer some coaching to someone, I want to make sure it's someone that I actually believe I can help. And I, I, really, I really do think I can help you. Um, yeah. Thank you. In fact, I have an offer that I, I would love to make you. And I think it's perfect for where you're at and, and what you've got going on, if you would be interested to hear about it. Yeah, definitely. Awesome, good stuff. So I've asked him for his, this is called permission to sell. I asked him if he would be interested to hear about it. I'm not imposing it on him. He's confirming that he'd like to hear about it and that the permission to sell is very important. So if you want to, um, you know, grab, grab your notepad and your pen again, um, Graham, and I'll just kind of, you know, uh, you can you can note some things down here as we go because I want to tell you exactly what our process looks like if that's okay and and all the ins and outs. Yep, I'm ready. Awesome. Um, so the program that would be perfect for you um, is called our Elite Program. It's it's a six month program if you want to write that down and it's six months by design. We find yep. that there's kind of two parts to this journey. The first half of our time together, typically one to three months, depending on how fast you want to go, is the building and the launching and the initial results that we that we start to gather. We want to have your YouTube ads launched. We want to have your funnel on. We want to have you taking sales calls and closing. Um, and that all happens in the first half. And then, of course, the second half, we want to get you up to those big numbers. That's why I asked you about the 50K number, right? Because... 20k if i can be honest with you you don't know what you don't know but the 20k number is a bit yeah it's a bit small <laughs> we've taken yeah, we've yeah. taken so many clients to the 20k that that's kind of almost getting a little bit boring for me if i'm honest like the 50k number that's the one i'm like okay great let's let's work towards that one with yep. the 20k number being a bit of a pit stop so i would love to see us get to that in the first kind of three to four months ideally and then we can spend the next two to three months working towards the bigger numbers. Um, you know, obviously it comes down to how fast you want to go, but that would be the game plan. So, so six months, that's why, that's why it's six months. Um, and then there's a few main core components um, in the process. I mean, to be honest, we've simplified this, Graham, so that we can just double down on the stuff that actually matters. I, yeah. I find that certainly, you know, competitors of mine or people in the space, they just, they have such big, laborious, um, offers that just are so confusing that you, you, you log in for the first time and you just feel like you've, you've walked into, you know, uh, Doctor Who's TARDIS and it's just suddenly you get on the inside, it's massive and you feel lost and you don't know where to go. So we've yep. streamlined the deliverables to just get you what you need. We just get in, we get the result, we get out. So, um, so here's the first part. First part is we have a training curriculum and I'm going to have you go through that um, uh, as, as the first part of your coaching with us and that training is going to walk you through every step i mean it's, it's all there so we have a to z um, how to build the webinar presentation my framework for that how to build the webinar funnel how to launch your first youtube ad how to script it um, how to take your sales calls the script that we use the checklist for everything it, so it's all in there and that's and that's the training however yep. I'm sure you're probably thinking right now, well, training alone is, is something that you've got stuck with before. We need more than just good training. Would I be right in assuming that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, and, and that would be true, right? You know, you need great training, but you need the guidance. It's like going through, going through, it's just a silly example that just popped into my head, but it's like, you know, preparing to go through the jungle, right? You can go through yeah. some training videos and watch some YouTube videos on how to, how to prepare yourself, but it's going to be very different when you're out there in the jungle and there's 20 different animals trying to eat your face off. We kind of need to prepare ourselves a little better with maybe a guide. <laughs> as extreme yep. as that example was, someone needs to walk us, walk us through the process. So um, that's when the coaching kicks in. So the first thing yep. I'm going to do is myself and you, one on one are going to jump on and we're going to have a deep dive um this what we're doing right now is not a deep dive this is a get to know us session we would actually dive into exactly what your plan of attack is going to be for the six months so that you don't get into a program and wonder you know what the heck's going on and what, where should you go for help you know we're going to jump on one-to-one -one, me and you and, and really iron out your plan of attack 
So, so that's where we'll start. The next thing is, look, my team becomes your team. Um, I've got a team of experts, not just quote unquote coaches that I've hired to be coaches, but actually the people on my team that do the relevant tasks, launching of yeah. ads, recording of videos, building of webinar funnels, um, you know, sales. Obviously, I'm, I'm doing this call with you because I, I jump in and do some of them, but I've got a team of people that handle these sales calls for me and, um, yep. and they're you know, epic at what they do. So my team becomes your team, essentially. Completely untapped, um, um, uh, sorry, unrestricted access. Whoever you need, uh, you get them. And we've got a couple of ways yep. that we do that. We put you into a Slack thread where you get to, um, to speak directly to my team. No gatekeepers, no administrative staff trying to keep you from the people that you need help from. Just You can just tag someone and, and you can get a response from them. Audio message, text message, whatever you need. And you can book one-to-one -one calls. Right. And that's the, yep. next, the next part of this is that you know sometimes there's times where you just need to jump on one-to-one -to, -one to get your webinars reviewed, get your ads reviewed, jump on and have someone walk you through your numbers. Um, so you know, you're never going to be alone again, essentially. You know, you're just always going to have that one-to-one -one support that you need. Um, yep. And then finally, and there's one more thing, and that's every resource checklist SOP you could possibly need, we've got it for you. So we've spent a lot of time putting these resources together that just make the implementation of this so much easier, right? So we've got webinar framework templates, we've got slide decks that you can rip off, we've got um, YouTube ad scripts that are just word for word and you fill in the blanks, we've got done yep. for you webinar pages that you can just implement immediately. So. Um, we've got all of those that you could need to just make it uh, so much easier. So how, how does that sound to you? Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds really good. Are the calls at set times or, or is that sort of flexible? No, that's completely flexible, to be honest. You know, we've got clients um, all over the world in, in different time zones. And so, you know, we're, we're happy to accommodate with a call in the morning or an afternoon our time to, to match what would work for you. Of course, we would just ask you to be respectful and, and not uh, request a call at one in the morning every time for my team, but I'm sure we can find yeah. times that work, yeah. For sure, okay, brilliant. So how, do, how does that all sound to you? Sound like something that you need? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it, it, the, the process sounds clear. Um, you know, I'm gonna uh, just, I'm, I'm gonna have a quick think about it, take, take a breath and, um, you know, I'll come back to you as soon as I can and, you know, hopefully we can we can get started. OK, so, yeah, I, I hear you on that. Um, let me ask you a question. What, what is it exactly that you need to you need to think about? Um, I want I do want to have a quick chat with my wife. Um, and I think really that is that is the only box that I want to tick before I uh, move forward got it okay no that, that's helpful to know i appreciate that so so what i'm hearing is that there's really there's, there's there's no other reason that you wouldn't be interested in moving forward with this it sounds like what you need the, the only thing is just quickly running it past your wife yes okay so what i'm starting to do now and by the way notice that graham hasn't even asked me how much the coaching is yet i've described what's included i've described what he's getting and already He's starting to get off the phone, but he hasn't even asked how much it is. So that that shows me that he's just a bit nervous. He's just a bit fearful. This feels like a big step, but I wouldn't be a good advisor right now. I wouldn't be a good coach for Graham if I didn't keep the conversation going and moving us in that direction because he doesn't even know what he's thinking about yet. Um, also, of course, he mentioned his wife earlier, and that's not a legitimate reason. It's just one that he's bringing into the picture. So I'm going to address that now and we'll see where the conversation goes. Yeah, so that, no, that's, that, that's super helpful. Um, can I be honest with you about something just real quick? Yeah. You mentioned that your wife is the only reason why you wouldn't move forward on something like this. But of course, at the beginning of our conversation, and I even put it on my notes here because it's something that I always want to you know, get clear on. You mentioned that your wife kind of just leaves you to it, uh, allows you to make decisions by yourself. So I'm wondering... And forgive me if this is overstepping the mark a little bit, but I'm wondering if there's another reason why we're delaying here a little bit. Maybe it's not the wife. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, look, you know, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it's a, you know, a reasonable investment. I, yeah, you know, 
how, how much is it? Yeah, no, good question. So, um, you know, for us to give you everything we just mentioned, you know, the full six months of coaching, the one-to-one -one deep dive with me, uh, unrestricted access to my team, the one-to-ones, our resources, everything that we would need to get you to the pit stop of 20K a month and then onto the, the big goal of 50K a month, um, it's just uh, 12,000 US. Okay. Okay, I mean, I think I, I think, I mean, I have got some put aside, you know, I'll be transparent with you, John. I, I think to be honest, you know, I do this for my clients, right? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm hiding behind my wife in a way. <laughs> That's my own fear. Um, the process sounds great, um, very clear cut. And I, I know, you know, I feel like the support's going to be there after our conversation. Um, so, you know, I think I just need to get off the fence. Okay. Well, that's quite, quite frankly, Graham, very honest of you. And that's uh, it's very self-aware as well, you know, and, and, and the 12, the 12 K price that's, that's doable for you. It's, it's just a bit of fear, but, but that's something that's feasible. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's going to drain those savings almost entirely. Um, I've, I've been putting some aside. Uh, again, I mentioned that we, we haven't been on holiday for, um, you know, for, for three years, um, maybe more, uh, you know, I wanted to put some of it towards that, but I, you know, I understand that if I need, if, you know, if I'm going to grow this business to 20, 50 K, then, you know, I'm going to have to take a risk, you know, um, but we, you know, we're, we, we are going to go on holiday. So, you know, I, I, I can't start now anyway. So maybe I can, I can call you when I'm back and, you know, we can, we can get started then, you know, I, I, I do want to do this. Got it. Very cool, man. Well, look, firstly, um, that, that's, that's awesome. And I, and I'm pleased to hear that you're going away on holiday because, uh, you mentioned you haven't had one in, in three years. So just, just real quick, where, where, where are you going? Anywhere nice? Um, nowhere, nowhere crazy. So we're going to the Canary Islands, um, you know, just for a week, just, uh, nothing flash, just, you know, just need that bit of a break and then I can, I can come back and, and really focus on, you know, on my next move. Very nice, man. Fantastic. So what I've done here, just real quick is I'm picking up on obviously the holiday thing, but I do want to just interject real quick with a, with a, with a friendly question. Yeah, oh, we know where, where, where are you going? You know, um, by doing that, firstly, I'm softening the environment at the moment, which could start to feel a bit edgy, right? We've talked about a 12K price point. He's feeling a bit nervous. So I'm kind of like cutting through the sharpness of the conversation a bit with a friendly thing. But I think there's something even more powerful going on when you do something like that which is that you're showing that it's not all about getting the sale at this moment in time. If I was relaxed and comfortable and whether he enrolled or not, I'm good, then I wouldn't feel the pressure to be hammering him for a sale. I'm still going to lead him down that path, but I wouldn't be hammering him. I'd feel quite relaxed. And so naturally I would ask a question like that in a conversation. And obviously this process is following what I call a conversational close. And so I want to do that. And it's going to give Graham that feeling of, okay, like he actually really does care about me and what I'm telling him as opposed to now just being all in on, on getting a sale, you know? So that, so that's why, that's why I did that. Awesome. Graham, so, so, you know, sounds good. Um, uh, and like I mentioned, I, you know, I'm pleased that you're, you're going to get away on holiday and, and hopefully this doesn't need to be, um, the only one you have for another three or four years. Perhaps we could, sure. once we get this process in order, we can have you going on holiday once a year, twice a year. I mean, what, what's, what's ideal for you, by the way, how many times a year do you actually want to go away? Uh, we, we, you know, we, we love to travel. We just, we just haven't got the facility to do it. So, you know, three, four times a year, you know, hopefully I can just open the laptop wherever I am and, you know, work from around the world. Wonderful. Yeah. I've got, so I've got a client called, um, Mariana and she loves to travel so much that she just, she lives in her camper van and she just drives around and travels to different beaches and different spots and, and does this from her laptop. Amazing. So it's, uh, it's possible, man. It's awesome. Amazing. Good. Okay, cool. So you, you mentioned that you, you, you're, you're all in is what I'm understanding, but you've got this holiday coming up and so you wouldn't be able to start for a little bit. Is that what I'm, is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Okay. So um, if you wouldn't mind, because I'm just making some notes here, obviously we're 5th of July today. Um, so when, when exactly are, are you, are you leaving and coming back? Um, okay. So we'll be back uh, up and running probably the 24th 24th Monday got it Monday 24th so why don't we give it um, 
a couple of extra days for you to get settled when you get back before we kick off? Would that would that yep. be helpful, I suppose? Yep, definitely. So if we said the 26th. 26th, awesome. So now what I'm doing is notice that I'm doing something called the assumed close, right? I'm just assuming, okay, well, we're in, we're moving forward. I'm, I'm arranging a date schedule with him to get started. I'm not saying, would you like to start on this day? And, you know, would you like to talk again when you get back? I'm getting things locked in. It's called getting tie downs. And, um, and so that's what we're doing here. Okay, awesome. So get you started on the 26th. Um, just help me understand one more thing. And again, I appreciated your honesty about just feeling a bit nervous and uh, I totally get it, right? You know, I've been there. I've made some big coaching investments in my time and I, I know that feeling that you might have in your stomach right now where it feels like it's doing somersaults. <laughs> Would yep, that be accurate? Definitely. Yeah, that's completely accurate, John. Yeah, I, I, I know that feeling, man, but oftentimes it's the best stuff on the other side of that. So, so it sounds like you're in, but it's just the holiday. So just let me, if you wouldn't mind me just confirming here, outside of the holiday then, and you going away for a couple of weeks, outside of that, there's, there's literally no other reason why you're not getting started. It's just the holiday? Yep, yeah, that's it now. Just want to go away, come back with a clean slate and, you know, crack on. Perfect. Okay. So, so here's what we can do then. Um, we'll get you enrolled today. You mentioned that the 12 K is, is a stretch, but it's feasible. We want to get you locked in. There's no other reason that you wouldn't be doing this other than the holiday. So, um, what we'll do is we'll get the process started today. I'll, I'll take your, I'll take the full payment of the 12,000. We'll get your spot locked in. I'm going to inform the team. We're going to do some high fives around the office. We're going to be excited. I'm going to share my notes with the team and I'll tell you yep. what I'll do for you just as a goodwill gesture as well is I'm going to go ahead and start opening up your accounts so that you can have access to the training for an extra two weeks. So from today's date, I'll actually give you access to the training material, the resources and checklists, but your six months of official coaching won't actually start till the 26th. So just as a goodwill gesture, anytime you have on holiday, you can, um, you can take a look through and, uh, and, and, and go through it there as well. So um, if you're ready, what, what, um, what, what's, the, what's the long card number on the front of your card? Whew, okay, so it's four two five seven. Four two five seven. Okay, so now, obviously, you can see we're going through the enrollment process. So we'll skip this bit. We'll cover up any credit card information. Um, I'll point out that there's another scenario that this could have gone. Um, Graham, you know, was you know essentially a, a relatively easy lead to convert. He came on the phone and was was excited to have this conversation was uh, didn't have very had very little resistance and and ultimately with a little bit of objection handling at the end he realized this was the right decision and and, and in he came um, this might have gone to someone who does not want to pay up front right now and would rather pay when they get back but i still would get the tie down and get them locked in and i'd take a deposit if that person was in that scenario um, and also keep in mind, there's more advanced sales training that we can dive into when we hit these moments in a call, if the objection handling is a little bit harder. But for now, assume that I've enrolled Graham, I've got his credit card information, his spot secure. Now there's a very important final part of the call, which is where we, we handle the post sale part of the call. I want Graham to feel like he's made a great decision. He's going to have that knot in his stomach and I want to make sure that he... he um, he has a sense of, I've got something for my money immediately. So that's where the conversation is going to go now. Awesome, Graham. So um, good news. looks like the payment's gone through. So you are in. Welcome to the Elite Coaching Program. Okay. Well, thank you. H how do you feel? Scared. Yep. Uh, but I'm excited. Good, man. Fantastic. Well, listen, I'm, I'm really excited for you. Um, I don't want to jump off the phone too quickly. I actually just want to quickly share with you next steps and what's going to happen from here, if that's okay. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, well, first things first, you made a great decision. Truthfully, um, you know, investing in yourself in something like this is the best thing you could do right now. You know, the idea of you continuing to um, beat a dead horse, as it were, you know, doing what you were doing before. Facebook ads you don't understand, yeah. a webinar that's, uh, sorry, a, a website that's not really getting you the right kind of leads, calls on the phone that aren't closing. You know, yeah. we're now going to have a system where you're going to have YouTube ads that lead to a webinar that get the right people on the phone. You're going to have sales calls you actually enjoy um, and that turn into clients. So, you know, we're, we're going to do a 180 now, man, and we're, we're, on a, we're on a completely new path. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, I, I can't wait actually now. Now I've sort of taken that step and committed, um, uh, you know, I'm 
so excited. Good stuff. So what I've just done there is part one of a two-part post-sale um, you know, confirming of, of stuff for Graham. The first is reiterating where he was and now where we're going to take him. It's called future pacing. I want him to get off the phone and not doubt his decision, but be freshly reminded the last thing he remembers on the phone call. I don't want it to be a back and forth on objection handling. I want the last thing he remembers to be the future pacing, where we're going and remind himself it's a good decision. And the second part is right now. And so, you know, so what's going to happen now, Graham, is uh, as soon as I get off the phone, I'm going to go ahead and connect with the team. I'm going to share their inf uh, your information with them. I'm going to share my notes on this conversation so they know kind of where we're at. Um, we're going to open up your account to our training area. Um, I will send that to your email, um, which we've got on file. I believe it's yep. grahamthebest at gmail.com. Is that right? Correct. Yep, that's it. Love that email. So we're gonna we're gonna send you your your training materials. You should, you should get a login. If you don't, for whatever reason, you know how to contact me. So just message yeah. me, text me. Um, you know, we'll make sure that we get you set up. All the resources will be in there as well. Um, and then what you'll also have just in the next couple of days before you go away is my assistant will reach out to you about booking that one to one with me and you, and we'll look to get that scheduled. Um, well, pretty much on the 26th or as soon after as you want. I mean, that's totally up to you. Make sense? That's brilliant, John. Yeah, thank you so much. That's brilliant. All right, Graham, fantastic. Listen, I'm excited for you. Have a fantastic time away on holiday and, uh, and, and we'll connect again very soon. All right, take care. Speak All right, man, soon. speak soon. Bye. Thanks, John. Bye-bye. All right, fantastic. So two things that you need to do right now. The first is there's a link or a QR code or a button somewhere around me to access the framework for this call. You need to download that, you need to learn it and study it so that you can do calls just like this for your own business. And the second thing is if you want to go deeper on the objection handling portion of the phone call, which you can sometimes get stuck at, there's a video right here that you can click on the three biggest reasons why people say no on the phone and how to turn those no's into yeses. And I'll see you in a future video.